back to vCenter. So let's show you how to enable it first. I've already enabled it on Megatron to save us a few minutes, but I'll show you the, the general steps here. Host, configuration, advanced settings under hardware. So hardware advanced settings. And this is really the only advanced setting. But the way it works is this. You get to pick which device it is. I've already done it, but the way you do it is you click edit, and it's going to give you a list of all the PCI devices that it sees. And if you notice, things like my Intel NICs here that I'm actually using uh, for vSwitches, it actually puts the names out here, which I think is kind of handy. The ones without the VM NICs beside them are currently unused in the server. So you can see those. You can see my internal SATA controllers, my USB chipsets, things like that, my built-in Matrox GPU. Um, but you basically pick the device, like I'll pick this one, um, and it's going to tell you the device has a dependent device, the dependent device will also be marked. What that means is a lot of times you see like a, right here, a PCI Express root port or like a, a bridge or something like that, it'll automatically select that. One thing to also keep in mind is sometimes you will see, say, PCI quad port NICs, and the way that they're built and the way that their chipsets are, you can't pick one port and pass it through. The whole card has to go through. So it really depends on how you do this stuff as to how well it works. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a gotcha here. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, see, like mine right here, it's got two ports on a single card. And if I, it's probably going to yell at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's going to tell me that there is a dependency warning, and it lost automatically marked as pass through as well. So it's going to want to do both of those ports instead of just one. So that's something to keep in mind. So look at this. So we'll hit cancel. Normally you'd hit OK, and it'd say OK, I can do this. And then right here it's going to say as soon as you reboot the host. So you have to put the host in maintenance mode, evacuate to VMs, and reboot the host, which is what I've already done. And when it comes back up, hopefully it'll list this here, and you'll see it. So let's see which VMs are on this guy, and I'm just going to randomly pick one. Uh, XP2. Let's edit. Uh, actually, you have to shut the VM down. I'll show you that now. So you, what you do is you add hardware like you normally would, and you're going to do PCIe device, and it's going to tell you you can't do it while the device is up. So are there any on Megatron already shut down? That are easy to use. Not that, not that, and that. I'll just shut him down. And we'll shut down the guest. So down he goes. Now, while I'm talking about this and waiting, the other gotcha. That device is going to be handed to that VM. That VM is going to have control. That VM needs to have a driver for that device. And we're going to have to find out why this doesn't work because I'm about to pass this NIC to an XP machine. XP doesn't have a driver. Now I could go download one if I really cared, but Normally, if you want your device to work in the VM, you need to have a driver for it. So if you're trying to pass through a PCI device that doesn't have a Linux driver to a Red Hat machine, it's not going to do magic. It's not going to make it work. It's not going to use a vSphere driver. It's not going to do anything like that. It's just going to go, eh, I see a device, but I don't know what to do with it. So keep that in mind as well. So we'll add PCI device, say next. It says, here's a list of all devices that you've passed through, only the one. So we'll say next. It says, hey, that looks fantastic. And you're finished. Save that. Open console. Power this guy up. So again, it's going to boot up. Mm. Oh, that device is already in use. I must already have a device with it in use. Who is using it? Who is it? Not you. I know it's one of these guys because I used them to test this the other day. It's this guy. So let's just jump over to him since he already passed it through. Process is the same. Just saves us the trouble of booting the machine. Advantage, blah, blah, blah. So it's already tried to install a driver, so let me show that to you. Uh, 
hardware, or Windows. Device Manager. And there's the Ethernet controller we passed through it. He doesn't know what to do with it because there's no XP driver. But that's the device. Um, so again, it looks just like a... There's the PCI slot and all that information. Doesn't know anything else really about it except the device ID. But it doesn't know, so I would need to install the right Intel NIC driver for that guy. So again, you can do this. There's not a whole lot of reasons to do this anymore. Um, the only time we do this, and I'll probably hit on this in the networking version of this speech, but uh, Cisco UCS allows you to do uh, what they call pass-through switching on Cisco UCS Blade, so you can actually do a VM direct path for the NICs and still be able to do things like vMotion and DRS and HA. They do a little voodoo magic. They have you actually put a piece of software on the vSphere host on the blades um, called the Virtual Ethernet Module. It's part of the Nexus 1000V switch, but you don't actually have to use that switch. You just use that piece of software, and it does some magic. But for everybody else, it breaks the motion DRS, HA, snapshots, all that stuff. So not really worth doing. But if you have a need, or more importantly, they ask you to do it on the exam, you'll know how to do it. So go to the host, go to configuration, hardware, advanced settings, edit, add it, hit OK, reboot the vSphere host, and then you can shut down a VM and add it as a piece of hardware. Not too crazy hard, just a lot of steps.